May I like to call to order the regular meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council for July 25th, 2024 to order at 7.02 p.m. On roll call, we have Council Members Dennis. Here. Fasolo, absent. Golubek. Here. Pellegrin. Here. Tracy. Here. Council President Sheridan. Here. Mayor Coletti. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's get started uh, with our pastor, Ron. He's going to proceed with our normal prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you heard from Pastor Ron, it's a sad day here in Elmwood Park. Uh, we lost a member of our community that I believe was born here and served in many capacities on different boards, the school board, and most recently, planning board chairman. And I believe he was the chairman of the school board at one time. Uh, Lorraine, he was? He, he, he was. Uh, Jeff was uh, the type of person that was involved. Uh, he'd be at uh, council meetings, library meetings, school board meetings, you name it. He would be there with his, with his wife, Jeannie. They were concerned and consumed with our town. Uh, periodically, it, it, we would 
sometimes take offense to it, but when you look at the goal that he was achieving was checks and balances. That's all he was looking for was checks and balances. Uh, he's going to greatly be missed, first of all, uh, on the planning board and here at our council meetings, but I think it's safe to say every time we look up and to the back of that room, Jeff will be here with us. May you rest in peace, Jeff. Pam? Jeff Freitag was a beloved member of our community and involved in many of the borough's organizations. His sudden passing has left a void in our hearts, but we'll forever remember his passion, his wisdom, his commitment, and his service to the borough. Rest in peace, Jeffrey Freitag, 35 Hillman Ave. Councilwoman Sheridan. Um, it's still a shock. I mean, um, my heart goes out to the family. I learned a lot on the planning board, even though I've only been on it for a couple months. Um, Jeff, rest in peace. God bless. Councilwoman Pellegrin. Yes, I just want to say, um, I know Jeff and Jeannie for many, many years. I served on the school board with him for many years, and they've done so much for the community. And I think we're all just really still in shock right now. You know, we see somebody one day, and then the next minute they're not here. So um, my heart goes out to the family, and I hope God gives them the strength to get through this. And um, we're all here as a community to surround them with love and kindness and whatever we can do to help a little bit, we're here for them. And Jeff, you'll always be remembered for all you gave to this community and how much you love this community. And we'll all never forget that. May you rest in peace. Councilman Golenbeck. I want to ex <clears throat> extend my condolences uh, to Mrs. Freitag, um, uh, Jeff Freitag Jr., the extended family. Um, as the mayor said, you know, 18 years on the Board of Education. Once he was done, he didn't walk away. He went to the next Board of Education meeting as a member of the public. And I remember as a, as a, as a student in high school, you know, uh, watching him every meeting, um, asking the questions, holding the board accountable. Even when his own wife was a trustee on the board, he didn't shy away from speaking as a resident as to what his opinion on the matter was. And, and we all know, you know, he's been a constant presence here uh, at our council meetings. Um, I, I mean, we can count, out of 20 some thousand residents, we can probably count on one or two hands the amount of people who took such a deep interest in their government um, and, and really to, to be informed, but also to hold us accountable. Um, and, and one thing I remember, you know, that quickly comes to mind is uh, Mr. Freitag would be very, very fast to point out when the borough was um, negligent and not raising and not lowering the flag half staff when there was a passing or an order from the uh, from the president or the for the governor um, and, and with that spirit mayor just a suggestion maybe on the day of his services um, that would be uh, appropriate for his community service and because he was really the the lead advocate on that subject so once again my condolences he will be missed councilwoman dennis Uh, <clears throat> I do want to extend my condolences to those that had the privilege, the privilege to uh, know Mr. Freitag, to his family, to his son, who I've actually never met. But for the last 10 years that I've known Mr. Freitag, uh, every Board of Ed meeting we've attended together, he's told me about his son, who I believe works in Belleville and all the great things that he does in his school district. So Mr. Freitag was a proud member and resident of Elmwood Park. Um, it's hard to look up and not see him in the audience. I don't know who's gonna hold us accountable. I thought he was just doing that at Board of Ed meetings until I saw him at council meetings and realized he's everywhere. <laughs> he was everywhere all the time, making sure everyone was doing the right thing. And uh, like the uh, council member said, he's never afraid to hold anybody accountable. Um, he will be sorely missed. And I hope those that are hurting now are comforted by all the memories that you've made with him. 
um, just know that it was a privilege to have him in your life and it was a privilege to even watch him come up here or in any forum and, and give his opinion and to show everybody how intelligent he was. And I always wondered if he was a teacher or a cop or a contractor. I never knew what he did for a living, but I know he was extremely intelligent and always on top of everything. And I always had a great admiration for, for Mr. Freitag. Um, I pray for his wife, his children, his family, and all his friends. My condolences to you all. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chief Ligno. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, over the years, Mr. Freitag and I had our share of disagreements. Um, about a year ago, uh, he had a, 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 a medical episode, and I had reached out to him um, despite of those disagreements, and he responded, and I think we had a, developed a mutual respect for one another from that point on and uh, our relationship changed as a result of that interaction. And uh, he was a passionate man who cared about Elmwood Park. Um, he attended every meeting that he could. And when he, when he wasn't here, it was, it was strange. And it's gonna be strange for a while now. Um, I call on all of us, Elmwood Park, everyone in this room, this body, to rally around Mrs. Freitag. She's, she's gonna be lost without him. They're, they're, they were best friends. Um, they, they did everything together. And I know my department will be looking out for her regularly. And uh, we need to keep her close to us and, and in, in, in our prayers. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas chapter 231 of the public laws of the state of New Jersey require at the commencement of every meeting, a statement of compliance be read by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised that the meeting requirements for this meeting have been met by publishing a special notice in the record in Herald News and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk, as well as in a public place within the municipal building. Also by notifying interested citizens, said notice was posted and transmitted on June 26, 2024, and published on July 3rd 2024. Okay, first on the agenda we have the approval of minutes. We have June 6, 2024 work session meeting, June 6, 2024 executive session, June 10, 2024 special meeting, and June 20th, 2024 regular meeting. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Yes, first by Pellegrini, second by Golubek. On roll call, we have council members Dennis. Yes. Fasolo, absent. Golubek. Yes. Pellegrini. Yes. Choicey. Yes. Council President Sheridan. Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we have our consent agenda. We have resolutions R-235-24, approval of payroll. R-236-24, approval of bills list. R-237-24, authorize current estimate number five, change order number four, Borough Park Turf Field. R-238-24, authorize vacation buyback. R-239-24, approval of items of revenue and appropriations, NJS 40A colon 4-87. R-240-24, resolution to refund open permit. R-241-24, resolution to refund Markel MFTG LLC. R-242-24, resolution to contract with AARP of Elmwood Park, Chapter 3864. R-243-24, resolution for contract with Elmwood Park Homeowners Association. R-244-24, appointment of full-time public safety telecommunicator, Police Department, Leslie Watson. R-245-24, appointment full-time laborer, Department of Public Works. R-246-24, appoint part-time clerical recreation department. R-247-24, appointment of recreation department staff. R-248-24, authorized purchase of equipment. R-249-24, authorized purchase of equipment. R-250-24, approve Elmwood Park Fire Department stipend program, second quarter compensation. 
R-251-24, Resolution Authorizing Tax Exemption for Disabled Veteran, 34 Pulsa Avenue, aka Block 1206, Lot 5. R-252-24, Approved Block Party Request. R-253-24, Person-to-Person -person Liquor License Transfer. R-254-24, Approved Handicap Parking Space, Lee Street. R-255-24, Approved Handicap Parking Space, Phillip Avenue. R-256-24, Hiring Employees to Staff the Elmwood Park Emergency Medical Service Unit. R-257-24, Authorizing the Mayor to Execute an Agreement with the County of Bergen, Snow Plowing slash Salting Shared Service Agreement. R-258-24, Maintenance of 37 Henry Street. R-259-24, Resignation of Firefighter. R-260-24, Appointment of Firefighter. Firefighters, R-261-24, transfer of firefighter, R-262-24, authorized payment of equipment, and R-263-24, resolution to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Shanae. May I have a motion on the consent agenda? So I need a second. second. Any discussion? Just to go to show you that uh, how things have changed and will change. If Jeff was here, he'd probably have questions on one of these. Mm -hmm. Call the roll, please. First by Pellegrini, second by Dennis. On roll call, we have Council Members Dennis. Yes. Fasolo, absent. Golubek. Yes. Pellegrini. Yes. Troisi. I'm going to recuse from R-250-24, 259, 260, and 261. Yes to the rest. Okay, Council President Sheridan? Yes. Motion carries. Next we have departmental report. We have the zoning board meeting minutes from May 22nd, 2024, and the library board meeting minutes from May 20th, 2024, and June 17th, 2024. Motion to accept the Some reports. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Yes, All in favor, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, I will turn the meeting over to you for council reports. Okay, uh, we'll start on this end. Uh, this is uh, Troisi, would you like to start? Sure. Um, Saturday the 20th was movie night. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend because I had to attend my brother-in-law's surprise birthday party, but from what I understand, while attendance um, was a little lower than expected, it was still a very enjoyable event. The school year program registration has opened on the 22nd, and return, that's for returning families. It will open to new families on the 29th, and so far we've got about 30 children that have registered so far. Adult volleyball will be wrapping up at the end of July, and it will return in the fall. Uh, Built by Me STEM program is being planned for grades uh, two through five. The dates are being finalized. We'll run on Tuesday nights for six weeks, starting at the end of September throughout the month of October. And they're planning for the winter basketball program. Uh, registration will open for that in September. The next rec advisory board meeting is September 16th. And then uh, Board of Ed, their next um, meeting is the 24th of September. And just progress, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Sheridan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Surprise, I, huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> um, since uh, Tuesday night, this Tuesday night coming up, July 30th, we have the uh, concert, and it's Bobby Wilson and the Chicklets. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I pronounced well, that exp right. Explain to them why you said that. Because every the mayor usually announces the concerts as they go on, and he made it Bobby Wilson and the, what did you say? Chicklets. No, you didn't say that. You said something totally I different. I said chicklets. You spell it. It says chicklets to me. Chicklets. I asked my wife, who is a phenomenal speller, she said, Chicklets, I don't know what the heck you guys are talking about. <laughs> well, if if you really want to know, show up next Tuesday, 730, Barrow Field. If it rains, it'll be at the high school. And once again, the name of the group? Bobby Wilson and the Chicklets. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, and also, I just want to say again, uh, Jeff, 
Fried tag, rest in peace, and God bless. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Pellegrin. Yes, Mayor. Um, my police update, the Junior Police Academy 2024 will start on August 5th through August 16th, ages 9 to 16. 146 children are signed up for this year's academy. National Night Out will be held on Tuesday, August 6th. Start time is 5.30 p.m., location corner of Mola Boulevard and Market Street. Enjoy this evening filled with food, bounce houses, face painting, cotton candy, barbecue hosted by Steve's Burgers, live concert featuring No Filter Classic Rock. This is a free event for all. Come meet our police officers in an informal setting. Also, our Elmwood Park Fire Department will be displaying their equipment and apparatus. Our Elmwood Park Recreation staff will also be at this very special community event. Come join us for a great evening. The next Board of Health meeting will be held on Monday, August 12th at 7 p.m. right here in the courtroom. Public's always welcome to attend. And on Tuesday, July 16th, the new chamber had their networking event for our businesses. It was a great evening getting to know the owners of our local businesses, and it was great conversation throughout the event. For more information on the new chamber, you can go to www.elmwoodpark.com chamber.org. Their monthly meetings are the third Tuesdays of the month at 6.30 at our local VFW. All are welcome to attend. Progress, Mayor. Thank you. Lorraine, on National Night Out, will we be receiving an email on that? We are, well, yeah. Chief, you'll send an email to us. We already got the flyer in an email to us, but if you want a reminder, we'll okay. do that. And once again, my compliments on the progress uh, with the Chamber of Commerce moving along very nicely. Numbers are increasing. Yeah. Those businessmen mean business. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Councilman Golubek. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to compliment all of our borough employees and the, the mayor and council. Uh, there is more to do in Elmwood Park today than I, in my 22 uh, years of living here from our facilities and our parks, from the field upgrades, from the concerts, to the street fairs, to uh, everything in between. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very positive reflection on everyone that's involved. Um, and I just encourage our residents to, to attend as much as possible. The more these events are attended, the more hunger we have to do more. So again, my compliments to, to all of our, our borough employees, elected officials and otherwise. Uh, from that standpoint, community oriented, we're doing a fantastic job. That's all I have, Mayor, thank you. Yeah, to, to your point, Daniel, that, that's uh, communication. And when we work together and our focus and objective is one, bipartisan, the end results is the report you just gave. Councilwoman Dennis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I normally talk a lot, but I can't today. So I just want to um, let everybody know um, life is short. Um, again, condolences to Mr. Freitag and his family. Uh, we also lost another Elmwood Park resident, um, Eliza Stoles, this week. Um, her services will be held on Saturday. Um, very involved resident, involved in a lot of uh, youth activities in the schools. Um, we're all not promised tomorrow, so uh, make those phone calls, have those lunches. If you promise to meet up, go meet up, uh, reach out to your friends and family, and, and appreciate them while they're here. Uh, progress, Mayor. Thank you. I had uh, seen something very disturbing yesterday on the national news. It had to do with some demonstrations in Washington. And there's nothing wrong with demonstrating peacefully. But when it comes to burning that flag there, I think, and maybe we have our attorney with us this evening, that should be a felony right off the bat. As soon as they touch that flag, 248 years of people dying, getting maimed, and they got the right to burn it, and they, there's nothing legal we can do. Please, please. There you go. Mayor, good evening. I, I, I may share your outrage. Um, it's disgusting when I see it around the world, right? They burn our flag. Um, 
being a descendant of grandparents who fought in world war two ah for the right for people to protest um i'm not sure that it's our right to say how they can protest so um i may not like it right i don't like when people kneel right for the for the national anthem i certainly don't approve of people burning the flag but i don't think it's our role to say how someone can protest because it makes us feel better is that the the glitch there the uh, you're violating somebody's rights on how to protest or my complaint is you can protest and and keep it peaceful nothing wrong with that that's part of our constitution everybody has the right to do that but burning the flag the symbol of our country has the supreme court brought that down that's yeah. become a, a yeah, that's, that's protected from the from the supreme court that's right yeah. all right yeah. well that doesn't mean you can't mayor be outraged about it and speak in your own way that you think it's wrong but um we can't kind of pigeonhole just what we want people to do because it makes us feel comfortable, as offended as we might be about it. Yeah, think about it. The democracy we have here, if this was another country on the, over there and over there and over there, not mentioning no names, their heads probably be chopped off for doing something like that. That's the greatness of our democracy. It's got checks and balances, and we should endure it. May I have a motion to open the, the floor to the public? Second. Anyone from the public here to speak on any issue whatsoever? Lenore, please come forward. Hi, good evening. Good evening. First, I am deeply saddened about Jeff Freitag. I'm going to try and keep this short. No. First, Tanisha had suggested a while ago that I come to the council meeting and ask, which I have done previously, where the $1.1 million went to. It was accounted for, but we don't, I don't know, and the residents don't know where it went to. And Specifically, what $1.1 million are you talking about, Lenore? Well, it was a few months back where it wasn't accounted for, and then there was auditing done, and then they supposedly found out where the money went to. So that $1.1 million plus the two million for the turf that the residents will have to pay for comes to $3.1 million that eventually the taxpayers are going to have to come up with. Now, yeah. I've asked where it went. So far, I haven't gotten an answer. That's well, the 1.1 one, the 1 .1 is accounted for now. Where did it go? And that's accounted for in a tax increase, which I'm sure we're all going to see very shortly, if you oh. haven't seen it already. The 2.2. Uh, I believe it's a little more than that, to tell you the truth, uh, but that was bonded. And yes, over a period of time, the taxpayer will see that. Continue. But where, what department, what departments, where did the, where was the 1.1 allocated to? Basically, what I consider it is a bounce check, because eventually the taxpayers are going to have to come up with the money for that money. That's all I'm saying is I'd like to know where it was allocated to. I, I, it's, I don't think it was a mistake. It, was, it just was a shortage. Uh, Mike, do you have uh, anything you want to say on this? I, I just, my understanding of it is that the CFO underfunded that budget um, uh, by not appropriating the right amount of money. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's my understanding of it, Mayor. It wasn't uh, any overages in salaries, overtimes, departments. Um, every year, everything goes up, right? Ga uh, garbage, recycling, salaries do go up. Health benefits was a tremendous increase. Uh, pension contributions, 
all the things that make this borough work, none of them go down ever. They always go up. The only way to keep uh, that stable or ahead of it is to bring in more revenue. Mm -hmm. And if there's no revenue, additional stream to bring in, mm -hmm. then it's 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 the taxpayer. Yeah, right? it's a, I think it's a conglomeration of little things. You put it all together. It was a shortage. Uh, as uh, our BA has mentioned, uh, inflation, who knew that we were going to experience 15 to 20 percent uh, increase in the last uh, three and a half years. So you add that into the equation uh, and the surplus probably should have been the year before should have been increased more surplus, which it wasn't. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And it, there's it's accounted for. It's just no. it's just the fact that okay. it was not accounted for in the budget ahead of time. And that's where the shortage came in. Yeah, sure. So so additionally, we did a, f a few years. I don't, I don't know if it's actually two or three of um, zero increases to our residents. I, I, ha I happen to be a resident too. So I, I felt that in a good way, right? So now it, it's gonna go up, but it's gonna go up as if it were to go up equally over those years, right? So hopefully instead of spending that money, we saved it and now we can pay it. Yeah. So whether it was distributed evenly over those years of the zeros or it all comes in one year, to me, it's six and one half dozen the other, and, and like you said, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, basically uh, what the chief is saying, I'm gonna piggyback on it. If we would have increased the budget the previous two years, 2%, 2%, 2%, and 2% this year, there wouldn't have been no, uh, no increase. Okay. That's why we had the increase this year. The 0% increase, wasn't that due to COVID? And did the town get any funds from the government? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So the town got money well, from. Got a million dollars per year. Okay. So, a <laughs> million dollars per year. So you're talking 2.2 .2 million dollars you got from COVID, and we're still 1.1 million dollars short. Yeah, well, there was a screw up there in the accounting, and, and okay. And I'm and, just saying, I'm just asking. No, but I could tell you that there was, there's nothing egregious about no, it. I'm not saying it was. Okay. I'm not saying it was. I just wanted to know where the money went to. Okay, well, I can. Okay. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll empty Just, my pockets now. No, no, no. Okay, the, <laughs> the other thing, I gave everybody a packet. Now, this is regarding 37 Henry Street. My neighbor had asked me to contact the town because of the grass being overgrown and the weeds being overgrown and not being kept. So I did, and nothing was done. Nothing was done, nothing. Now, it doesn't take a month or two to get somebody to cut their grass. That's my opinion, and that's what it should be. If you're gonna put something in there, like I saw some, there, if you're gonna be notified, you have three days to cure it. If you do this, you have 10 days to cure it. Or if you do this, why isn't there something in there about the grass? I mean, grass is so simple. Just cut the thing, make it. You're all talking about making Elmwood Park beautiful. And yet, when I was going home up on Cadmus Avenue, the, the grass on one of the hill houses was like three feet tall. And it was like that for three months until finally it got cut. Now, whether somebody just did it, somebody complained, I don't know what happened, but it finally got cut. But anyway, in your packet, I went home today and I saw a white car and a garage door open at 37 Henry Street. So. I immediately pulled up like I did when all the squad cars were there. And I introduced myself and it happened to be, which his card is in the packet, the real estate agent for that house. He cut the front lawn and I said, well, did you do the back? And he goes, no, it's only trees in the back. I said, come on, let's go. <laughs> Took him in the back and you could see the three foot high weeds in the back, the pile of leaves, the pile of sticks, the pile of tree branches. And I said to him, look, you're the real estate agent. You want to sell this house? I said, first of all, you got to get rid of all this stuff. I said, first of all, and I showed him, 10 inches. That's all you're allowed. So he went back. I get, he cut the front lawn, but he went back and he did the backyard. I have pictures in there. The backyard is cut 90, 98%. You know, he left some stuff, but there's a pile of leaves. I told him that 
pick up is on tuesday i said you can put the stuff out but the branches have to be tied up now he's also going to sell the house i'm just letting you know that he did cut the front yard he did cut the back yard but there is still some stuff that needs to be taken care of that's in the backyard that he needs to get rid of like the pile of leaves and sticks and branches so i'm just saying whatever you were going to do with this 37 henry street that's on the agenda you might want to take another look at it and call the real he said to call him you got his number call him if you got a complaint call him he'll take care of it that's what he told me so that takes care of that i'm sure and I, I get what you're coming from, and I, and I do commend you for, for getting uh, that information to the realtor. Uh, but uh, he's the one that's got to take care of the property for the buyer, to, or, or the seller, I should say. And he should be pushing his client to have the grounds kept neat. Well, if you look at it, first of all, it was, I don't know, I can't pronounce his last name. The person who was living there, the person who was using that house as storage, he wasn't even living there. His first name was A-L-I, Ali. He actually ran this business that was in Lodi and another town. Back in June, well, I believe he died, he passed away in May. And in June, there was an update on the tax records. I don't know what the update is for other than now it's in the estate of. So whoever's controlling the estate is responsible. So you might want to contact the real estate agent and find out who hired him because it has to be somebody from the estate, whether it's the executor, they have to have letters of testamentary to do this. Contact him, find out you know, let him know what, you know, what is his position in taking care of this house? I mean, he did cut the grass. Yeah. I mean, did the owner of the, or the representative of the estate tell him to cut the grass? I don't know, but he was there today and it all got done. Great. So, but I don't know what else needs to be done. It, you know, I told him what needed to be done, whether he does it or not, that's the well, other thing. Well, you need to find out who owns, who's the representative of the estate. That's who you need to find out. If it's on the list with our uh, property maintenance people, uh, they'll go there mm -hmm. in the proper order. And there are laws there that we have to abide by. I think it's a three-step operation with 10 days in between, two weeks in between. Don't hold me to the amount of, of days. But it's a lengthy process before you can go on somebody's property and start doing what you want to do. I realize that, but if somebody is living there, which maybe he wasn't, maybe he had passed when she first asked me to contact. Yeah. See, the problem, Lenore, sure. even if somebody's there, they don't answer the door, they don't answer their mail. We can't go knock the door down because the grass is no, too high. I understand that. I do. I understand that. All right. you know, but, but in any case, what you did was good. It was great. Uh, you got it resolved, and you brought it to our attention. And Okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's the last we'll have to discuss this. Well, so. <laughs> okay, the other thing, the other issue I'd like to talk about is what I brought up at the last council meeting, and that was the federal requirement of the town notifying us in writing about the water quality report. We didn't get one for 2022, we didn't get one for 2023, and it's supposed to be mailed to us by July 1st. You had said you'd look into it. I'm here to say. Where is it? Well, did you look into it? And who is going to be responsible now for getting that mail out to everybody? So you, you realize we do have. Yeah. Uh, now, also, that flusher that you put up, I spoke to Dan, who works for Mueller, who made that flusher, okay? Now, let me ask, when they, when DPW comes, comes around and they open up the fire hydrants to flush the hydrants, how long do they keep it open for? Don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I guess until, they must have a 
sequence, maybe it's 10 minutes, 15, or, or they're watching the color of the water. They're watching the color of the water. So when the water turns clear, they shut the, the hydrant down, which is no more than five minutes. No more than five minutes. I've watched them, it's no more than five minutes. The flusher runs from 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. And then again from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And it's pumping out clear water for a half, well, let's just say for the first, for, for what, 25 minutes. It's pumping out clear water. How many gallons of water is being thrown into the sewer system or the, the drainage system? Okay, which the taxpayers are going to wind up paying for, but that's not the issue. The issue is it's clear water, yeah. and they're supposed to show. Did you ever, let me stop you right there. You Did you ever go to your gas burner or oil burner and drain the water, the, the, the bad water that's in the system? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you, you would dra drain it, right, uh -huh. close the spigot, come back, see clear water, and then all of a sudden another rusty part no. appears. No, I uh, run mine when the, I have a steam boiler, so when I run mine, it's discolored, the water is discolored, and I let the water run for at least a minute or two until it stops being, uh, you know, as long as it's clear. Yeah. And sometimes I wind up with a pot full of this much water, but it's clear, yeah. totally clear. Yeah. Now that's you, never, just, you never get a repeat of the rust? No. No? No. You've got a better unit than I have, I tell Practically you that. Practically new. I get, I get it, I'll run it for a while, then it goes back rusty a little while, then it clears up. So the point is, they got to make sure that the water's clear. That's the purpose of the flushing. But nobody's ahead, there to monitor it. Mayor, if I may, um, the flusher, I believe that Ms. Lenore is referring to, is in the Cherry Hill section. That one is there not for clarity, but for stagnation purposes. So that's the end of the line when it comes to our water lines that come into the borough. Uh, by the time the water gets refreshed in that area, sometimes it stagnates and we'll get complaints of resident, from residents in that area of a, a fishy smell. Mm. Um, Scott and our licensed water operator, Mr. DeBlock, we met on this topic twice already. And they said that the it needs to run for the duration that they have it set. He is a licensed operator. He doesn't care what Mueller says or anybody else says. And he also has DEP blessing and approval to do it the way he's doing it. It's in a controlled situation where it runs slower than as if you would just open a hydrant. It starts slow and then picks up speed. And it's mainly there for stagnation stagnation purposes to get the smell out of the water okay okay there was okay that's fine there was the person that we were told to contact this Robert we asked him or one of the neighbors asked him what happens if it happens at five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning when we get up to brush our teeth or take a shower will you come no so we said, what if we put the water in the bottle for you? No, we have to do it. It's got to be sterilized. What if we boil the bottles and put the water in? No, I have to do it. So then the question was asked, what happens if it's 9 or 10 o'clock at night? It happens. No, I can't come. So if the person in charge of taking the samples of the water is not willing to come because it's out of his job description, if you want to call it, what do you do? You can, you can purchase your own home test kits, but our water is monitored daily at every entrance point to the borough. And Mr. DeBlock cannot take a sample from a resident because he doesn't know the credibility of that resident and what they may or may have not done to that sample. They have to specifically draw the sample themselves in order for the continuity of the test. Okay, I agree that that's, if that's what it has to be, it has to be. But if he's not willing to come out when it happens... Who... He doesn't see the need to come out when it happens. The water is tested as it enters the borough. The flushers were put in place because a resident on Fournier Crescent was complaining of stagnation. This has settled that problem. Okay. We have not gotten a stagnation complaint since the flusher was put in the Cherry Hill section. 
Okay. Thank you, Mike. And thank you all. Thank you, Lenore. And will we be getting the water quality report anytime soon? Mike, could we, is that to be expected soon? It was sent to Scott. He's working on it with Mr. DeBlock. I will follow up with him. Okay, thank you. Anyone else care to speak? Linda, do you have uh, something you want to say to us? Ms. Colombini? Me? No. No? Okay. I thought you, you might have. I thought you had a present for me. What'd you say? You didn't put it on the agenda. Don't need it on the agenda. Yes, but you always, I'm, I'm not, I don't want you to put it on the agenda. All right, we'll do, it, we'll, we'll do it at the next meeting. I mean, I was already well bringing an angle, but. All right, okay, okay. Don't go nowhere with that cash, though, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> She's gonna present us with a check uh, for the, uh, the monument, yes? Name, rank, and serial number. Hi, my name is Jeanette Randazzo, and I'm at 102 Franklin Street in Elmer Park. First and foremost, you know, my condolences to the Fred Tate family. Um, Jeff and Jeannie also belong to the organization that I run with the AARP. Uh, in fact, Jeannie just became my treasurer, the new treasurer for my department. Um, so with that said, I want to thank everybody for approving the AARP. Uh, my members are definitely going to appreciate that, and uh, as well as myself, because things are tight. The economy is what it is, so uh, they will appreciate it. So I kept saying, I'll let you know, I'll let you know, because they're all anxious about it too. So again, thank you everyone. I appreciate your time in putting it in and accepting it. Thank you. We thank you. Uh also, and uh, you ever gone to one of their meetings and you see what her, her husband and the staff do for these 80, 90, 100 seniors, uh, those seniors look so forward to those meetings. Mm -hmm. And when they heard that you might be retiring, mm -hmm. uh, they were calling my office and I said, we won't accept her resignation. <laughs> Well, it was funny because this last meeting I had, Captain Kemp came and talked to the seniors, and they're very intense in listening, you know. I, sometimes you have to talk a little loud with them because they can't all hear, but the speakers, they just get a big, you know, they, they just love the speakers. I'm going to have uh, one of the bank members come uh, ne next month, but the month after, and talk about different topics as well. So they're always interested in the things that I have on plan for them. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. And we also have uh, the other director of the other main established entity in Elmwood Park. Uh, and she's going to come up and say something. I don't know what she's going to say, but she's going to say something. We need, we got to keep this formal. Name, rank, and serial number. Linda Colombini, 148 Phillip Avenue, Elmwood Park, New Jersey. I guess now I have to give you that check with interest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to thank everyone, too, for approving the uh, stipend. And you all know that it does go to good use. So, you know, money's already been spent, and it's nice that we can get it and back in return. And then this will afford us the opportunity to give even more back to our community. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. We, we, uh, we appreciate your efforts and... Uh, your commitment to the to to all of us. It's uh, so it's make this town's great. That's what makes it great. Yes, Mrs. Randall. Hey, I just forgot to mention um, when as the board of health and we go around asking for donations, mm -hmm. and things to help out the senior day. That's going to be in October this year. We also talk to all the new people that came into town, and we encourage them to join the chamber of commerce. So we get the, you know, we give them the address, we give them the numbers, and we get them. So of course we want more and more of our yeah. people to join that table of commerce, and we're working on our end to help that as well because we hit pretty yeah. much all of them in town. You know, you just you got me thinking, which is always dangerous, right? Yeah. It might be wise to piggyback an event with the Chamber of Commerce and the homeowners, Chamber of Commerce and the ARP. You'd get great exposure from both ends. So it might be something uh, that you ladies uh, would think about. I'll be there in any case. 
So, no. hmm? I mean, oh, I know, whatever. <laughs> okay. Anyone else care to speak? If not, I'll close the public portion. And do we have anything left, my dear? No. No? That's it? No executive? No. We can go home? Bye-bye. I need a motion. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.